Hey, hey, everybody. You can probably tell this is not the usual office chair at the desk that I'm normally sitting at. I'm out in the field this week bringing you guys along with me. So I'm at a really, really cool location here in Death Valley. I'm going to be spending the next three, four, five, maybe even six days in Death Valley and maybe even the Eastern Sierra. So I'm just going to take you guys along, give you guys some tips, walk you through kind of what I'm thinking as I'm shooting the images, show you each sunset and sunrise that I shoot, and just kind of uh, include you guys on this whole process. I'm going to show you guys the beauty of this Death Valley in the Eastern Eastern Sierra area. So I'm already out for sunset. So let's go ahead and jump right in there. I'm going to show you guys what I'm looking at, what I've got framed out and kind of what I think is going to happen with the sky. You can see we've got these really cool clouds. So we're going to go ahead and take a look. I'm going to flip you guys around and show you guys what I'm looking at here. All right, so the sunset wasn't predicted to be great tonight, but I can already see I'm really liking what's happening. I'm, I'm hoping we will continue to get more light. Now for composition, you can see that I kind of walked around. I walked quite a ways from the road, which is out there in the distance. And I saw these, this really cool uh, water features and different stuff going on. So I walked out here and I found this really, really awesome little mud crack area. You can see there's just, just this little section where there's mud and then a little bit of salt here separated by I guess mud and salt mix. So I'm using that as my foreground to frame out kind of the mountains in the background and then the nice sunset here. So got a lot going on here. We're gonna see what happens with this sunset, but I've already framed out my camera. I'm already in the right spot. Uh, it's probably a little dark for you to see it, but I am in a really nice spot right here and we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna take you guys along with me. Now it's important uh, that I'm taking photos right now while there's still sunlight because once, once that sunlight dips, the whole foreground is going to get kind of blue and like like blue hour and we want to catch it when there's still some light on it so I'm taking lots of photos right now I'm continually adjusting the exposure I'm making sure to not blow out this sunlight in the corner uh, you can of course bring up your histogram if you want you can see I'm not blowing anything out and I just want to keep taking photos here of properly exposed images and just make sure I get some of that light on the foreground. It doesn't look like there's a lot of light hitting the foreground, but I'm going to show you guys uh, in post-processing, you'll see that it's really, really obvious that there is a little bit of light hitting the foreground. And that's so important to create a really nice looking photo. So one of the really cool things about Death Valley is the ever-changing conditions. Now I've been out in this area, maybe not this exact spot, but this area uh, many, many, many times, probably at least a couple dozen times. And every single time the conditions are different, uh, depending on when the last rain was, that really affects things in the valley because salt is able to move down through the valley when there's rain and then it, the water evaporates, the salt sticks around. So there's always really cool formations and lots of really cool stuff going on in the valley here. So I love coming out here after a rain. I love coming out here when it hasn't rained in a while. You just get so many different conditions every single time that you come out. That's one of the main reasons why I absolutely love Death Valley. So I actually moved and ended up going with a different composition which you can see here. Originally I was uh, out over here shooting this way um, but I actually tried a few different compositions. So the first one that I tried was somewhere right around here um, which I like this little curve and then I also tried over here which was all right, but I didn't really like where the sun was on the edge of my frame. So then I tried one more composition and I'm trying these at all different heights as well, but I tried this one right here, which I really liked because you have a little curve going on here. So this composition I think is the one that I'm gonna choose. I really like where the sun is. It's kind of right on the left third of the composition. So, so important when you get out here to try so many different compositions, uh, try them quickly and then nail the one that you want so that you're in position when the sun is starting to go down. You can see it's about to hit the hills there, I want to make sure to capture some photos, like I said before, where I can get the light on the foreground. So, so important to get there early, find the right composition, and that way you will be able to take the absolute best photo possible. Right, so you can see now the sun has gone below the mountains here. It's still got a while to go before it gets to the horizon, but we'll see what happens with these clouds. I'm really liking the way this is looking so far. You can see just all directions, these skies are really, really nice. There's even some nice light hitting over here as well. So looking like it could be a really, really interesting sunset, but we'll see. I'm going to keep you guys updated and uh, we'll see if there's any color. All right, guys. Well, it looks like this here is about as good as the color is going to get tonight. Not terrible, not great either, um, but a good start to hopefully a really great trip. I'm really excited to see what kind of photos we can get on this trip. And this sunset is not bad. I really like this composition. I actually put this one in my map and I might come back here later this week, maybe when we have some more favorable clouds. So I'm super excited to see where the next few days take me. <laughs>
All right, guys, well, maybe you can see a little bit of color behind me here. It's actually 40 minutes before sunrise, so I'm out here super early. Uh, the color was there over an hour before sunrise. Really crazy how early that started appearing. That's usually a good sign the sunrise is gonna be pretty decent at least. So I've got that color there. I'm headed out to a similar spot as I was in last night. A little bit different area though. I'm hoping the mud cracks will be a little bit bigger out here. So I'm gonna shoot sunrise here and uh, then we'll go from there and see kind of what else the day brings us. Maybe if there's some nice soft light, I might do some more shooting later this morning um, or I may just go ahead and get some work done and then prepare for sunset tonight. So I'm gonna take you guys along with this morning's sunrise shoot. I've got um, some faith that it's gonna be a good one. So stick around and we'll see what happens. Alrighty, well this one is shaping up to be a good one it looks like. You can see we've got lots of color. And when I was setting up, I made sure to check lots of different spots at different heights. I like to just hold my camera out and take different photos when it's not on the tripod, just kind of look through the viewfinder, see what it looks like, um, and go from there, just so I make sure that I find the spot that I like the most. Now in this spot, of course, I could shoot that way. Um, you can really shoot about any direction with these mud cracks the way that they are. Uh, I like to kind of shoot more towards the sun, if anything else. So I may even try to find a composition that faces more this way, um, but we'll see. So we'll see kind of what happens with this sunrise it's already looking really good i am going to stick it out regardless until the light gets over this hill right here um so see what happens all right so the sunrise is looking pretty good i especially love the light on these mountains over here not really for photography but just for looking purpose you can see 360 color it was better uh, now that i'm taking this video it's not quite as good as it was but i was busy shooting photos so uh, while you're capturing a sunrise like this, obviously it's kind of fizzling out now, but I still like to keep uh, clicking photos. So I'm gonna just go up to the camera here and I am going to just keep taking photos. Um, just because you don't know what you're gonna want later for blending and then you're also gonna want to make sure that you move your focus point You may or may not be able to see me move the focus point down here to the foreground That's just so that I can do a focus stack later So I'm gonna keep taking photos like I said and I'm gonna wait until the Sun actually comes up over these uh, Hills right here. I think it should come up somewhere about in here um, and the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I want to get a picture where the light is hitting um, all of the cracks here. So that will allow me to do that. I've just got to wait for the light. So I brought a little breakfast out here. I'm just going to be hanging out for a little bit until that happens. So yeah, guys, I'll keep you guys updated when the light comes out. All right, guys, well, a little too cloudy. The sun never came back out, so I didn't get the light. Uh, but I want to explain just briefly why it's important to get that light if it's there for you. So if you get that light, uh, what it does is it adds a little bit of dimensionality to your scene. By getting the light on the foreground, it adds contrast, which helps make your image, which has appeared on a 2D screen or on a wall or whatever, makes it appear three-dimensional. So it's really important to grab that shot because that's something, and you may or may not blend it in later, but it's something that you have in your library that you can potentially blend into your photo um, later on when you go back to post-processing. It's always nice to have more pieces to use when you're post-processing because you'll have more options of ways to take your photo. So if I'm out there, I always like to try and grab the shot when the light first hits. That's something that can be uh, slightly blended in um, as opposed to the, now the way that I would have to do it without the light is to go in and dodge and burn, which is always a little bit more of a pain. So I like to grab the shot if I'm there. So that's really the reason why I'd go for the light. Uh, for the rest of the day, I'm just gonna kind of browse around, look at um, some different spots, check out a few things, scope a few things out, get ready for sunset, might shoot a few more photos. So we'll kind of see what the day has in store. And uh, yeah, really excited, hoping that tonight will be as good as this morning was. Here we go. Alrighty, well I decided to drive out to one of my favorite spots out here, which is these really cool colored hills. Uh, just because the sun, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's kind of peeking in and out of the clouds behind the hills here. And when it does that, it makes some really beautiful light. So I'm just gonna wait it out here for a little bit, see what happens with the light, and hopefully I can get some really nice light on my shot. All right, so there's just a little bit of sunlight coming through now. It's really, really subtle, but it does make a difference. I'll show you guys here the difference between the photo without sunlight and then the photo with sunlight. You can see it makes just a subtle difference and for that reason, uh, I just wanted to wait a few minutes just to get the light to come out. Now, the reason why I moved over into this spot is because you will see that there's this kind of rock in the center and in this spot, it contrasts really well with around the edges um, because the color of that central rock 
is a little bit different than what's behind it. Whereas when I was a little bit over to the left, you'll see that this photo here, we've got uh, not quite enough contrast to bring out that rock in the front, which is what I really wanna do with this image. So that's why I've moved over to this spot. Hi guys, really happy with the photos that I got this morning. Um, and especially in the late morning as well, got some really nice light on the hills. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to shut this thing down for a little bit uh, and we will pick it back up right at sunset. So I'm really excited. Hopefully these clouds will stick around and we'll see how good the sunset is and where I end up. Alrighty guys, well, did some off-roading today to get to a new spot. I'm on this really cool playa that's got uh, little rocks on it that appear like they're moving. So really, really cool spot. And uh, it looks like maybe you can see the sky here. Uh, it looks like maybe the sunset will be good. Uh, we'll see, but I'm gonna be up here for sunset and then sunrise and then maybe stick it out another day. I haven't decided yet, but today was a really good day of off-roading and I got a chance to sit down, recharge a lot of my stuff with the solar panel and uh, do a little work. So really excited to see what happens with the sunset. So I'll keep you guys updated with what's going on. All right guys, so we are headed out uh, right over here. You can see this really, really cool uh, playa that we're walking on. This is actually mud that's like cracked. Um, so walking across this up for about a mile or so to get to the rocks that I wanna be at. I already scoped it out earlier today and they're out here. So we'll see what they look like when we get there. Alrighty guys, so here is where I'm set up for the night. You can see there's this like little trail coming from this rock. So this rock essentially slid all the way down here. That's what makes the composition really cool. Uh, it's not super contrasty in this light right now, but hopefully if we get some good light, you'll be able to see the trail a little bit better. And the way that this happens, since I assume some people are going to want to know, they actually just found out a few years ago, essentially when there is water in the winter, uh, this area gets covered in a thin layer of water, that water freezes. And then when the early morning sun breaks up that ice and the wind blows, it moves these rocks. And it might take thousands and thousands of years for rock to move just a few feet um, so that is what they know about how this happens you can see there's kind of there's rocks all over the place out here some of them have slid some of them haven't and so we'll just have to see what happens with the sunset uh, the sun is setting right over in here and as always i'm out here early you can see on this composition i'm really utilizing this rock on the right side of my frame to anchor things down and then the line out to the left kind of helps to balance things out so i've got the leading line going left and the rock centered on the right that's what i've got going on with this composition of course i'm here early so that i can get these shots there's actually some pretty nice dark clouds in there right now so i'm taking shots right now just in case nothing good happens with this sunset at least i'll have some photos that are decent to go home with. All right, so it looks like it's gonna stay pretty gray and cloudy tonight. As you can see, uh, the sun is setting back over here. Uh, so I'm gonna head back, get some dinner and get some sleep. And I'll be back out here in the morning. Uh, I don't consider this an opportunity lost though, because it was good to get out here during the day, be able to scout it out. So I have a few spots picked out for tomorrow's sunrise, which will hopefully be better. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Adios. Good morning, everybody. It was actually so cold this morning that my GoPro would not turn on at all during sunrise. I tried to keep the batteries warm, tried to warm up the GoPro, and it just would not turn on. I got a lot colder than I expected it to be. I think it ended up being about 16 degrees Fahrenheit, which is uh, quite a bit colder than I expected. All my water was completely frozen this morning, so uh, it's now a little bit warmer into the afternoon. I've done a little bit of driving, and so I just wanted to make a kind of a recap video of this morning's sunrise because I think that would be somewhat helpful. Uh, so we're going to look at a few of the images that I shot this morning and I'm just going to talk you through them. So the sunrise was not too incredible, but it wasn't too bad either. There was a little bit of color in the sky um, to the north, so I was able to capture a few photos. So I want to show you this is one of the raw images that I ended up going with and I'm pretty happy with how this one came out. Um, the one thing that you will notice is that the sky looks like it was pretty good. Uh, however, the sky was not quite as good as you may expect. So I'm gonna compare this to another photo here. 
uh, that I took vertically. Now there's a reason why I shot this photo horizontally for the photo that I actually wanna use and edit, and it's because when I show you the vertical image here, you can see how much of the sky is blue and boring. So I intentionally used a horizontal crop uh, in this image here to make sure that the sky was interesting. There wasn't a bunch of boring blue sky. And then I've also included two thirds foreground, one third sky to cut out as much of that boring blue sky as possible. So you always wanna cut out as much as you can of boring sky and add as much interesting sky as possible in your frame. So that's why I've done that. So overall was, like I said, decent morning. You can see I stuck around here to grab a couple photos where the light was just hitting the mountain on the left side. I may wanna blend that in later. I haven't decided yet, so we'll see. But that's kinda of how the morning went. Um, I'm thinking about doing some traveling today, heading out to the Eastern Sierras where it will probably be just as cold, um, but maybe we will get some more interesting light. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the weather's supposed to look like. I haven't been able to check the forecast in a few days, so hopefully I can check the forecast today. Make a decision from there and uh yeah we'll go from there so i'm gonna keep you guys updated uh but i am gonna do a little bit of driving today so we'll touch base uh around sunset here we go guys Alrighty, guys well i've been driving uh for a good majority of the day and now finally at the location that i'm gonna shoot for next day or two here so i'm just doing some scouting uh looking around i've been here many times before but always checking new spots so that's something that i always like to do is get there early and check out new spots and it looks like we might have a good sunset, maybe a good sunrise, who knows? Uh, there is clouds, there's supposed to be clouds. So um, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys kind of what I'm looking at. I'm here about two hours before sunset. I'm not setting up to shoot quite yet, but I am checking out a few spots with my camera in hand. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of what we're looking at. Alrighty guys, well here we are. Beautiful mountains in the background. Lots of cool rocks down here in the foreground. Now tonight I'm probably gonna shoot an arch that's way down here that I've shot before. I haven't got a good shot there though, so I'm still after that. But I'm looking for a spot for maybe the morning or tomorrow night, um, and I'm looking for something that helps me frame out these mountains in the background here. I want some kind of a foreground. That's why I'm kind of up looking at these rocks that could maybe be on the left side of my frame. So I'm just kind of looking around. Maybe I'll find a cool cactus. Not quite sure yet, but I'm looking around and we'll see what we find. Like I said, unlikely I'm gonna actually shoot it tonight, but there's a good chance that I'll shoot it uh, at some point while I am here. So when I'm out here scouting spots, one of the things that I really like to do is just pull my camera out, no tripod needed, and just put it up here and kind of frame out the shot how it would be. I'll just snap a quick photo just to save for later. But I'm just walking around with my camera out, no tripod, just to all these different spots, scoping them out both directions, see which frames out better, and just have a wide variety of places that I know that will work for a shot if there's a particular cloud in a good area or something like that. So you don't need a tripod for this, just simply go out, hold your camera in your hand, and just look all around for different shots. Alrighty guys, well I decided to forego shooting the arch tonight. I'm shooting something nearby it actually though. Uh, I found this really cool cactus and it's kind of wedged right in between these two rocks. And that kind of gives me a leading line in my shot going out towards the mountains. Now when I look at this up here, uh, you may or may not be able to see, I'll brighten it up a little bit. So you can see there's a lot of dynamic range needed for this shot because the cactus is really dark and the sky is really light. But essentially this cactus helps lead me into the frame, uh, over into the left into the mountains. You'll also notice that I could shoot this if I wanted right at 17 as wide as my lens will go, but I'm actually at about 22, 21 and a half. I'm trying to zoom in as much as I can because as much zoom as I can afford, I want to use because then it will make the mountains a little bit bigger in the background. Of course, you could do a focal blend or something like that, but if you can get it all in one shot, it works a lot better. Now, the other thing with this scene that you may or may not have noticed is notice when you look here that this rock on the left, this rock here, you can't really tell that it's in the frame. It doesn't intersect the mountains on the top. So that's really important because if I was to back up to say to like right here, then it would intersect the frame. So I'm up there because I don't want this rock to be higher than my mountains in the frame. I want the mountains to be a solid ridge line on the top that's unobstructed. So just those little composition things are things that I'm always thinking about when I'm deciding exactly which composition to do. So it looks pretty cloudy right now. Uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe there'll be a little bit of color maybe not. Either way, uh, we'll be back out in the morning if not, so we'll see what happens. All right, so we're starting to get a little bit of color now. It's starting to turn a little bit yellow. I don't know if it's going to get any better or not, but now is the time when I'm going to start taking photos. 
And I can I slightly moved my tripod since the last video, but um, to take these photos, first of all, when there's a lot of dynamic range, you'll see that the sky is like bright white and the foreground is like dark black. This is where having a more expensive camera usually comes into play because you've got a little bit better sensor, a little bit more dynamic range. So on my camera, uh, this should be able to expose the scene perfectly fine. So what you want to do is bring up the histogram and on most cameras, you can push the up button and that will bring up the histogram right here. Or if you like um, this screen better, this is the histogram right here. So the reason why I want the histogram is because I wanna make sure that nothing is touching the far right. So you can see that if I was to bring up the exposure more, now there's a lot that's touching the right. So I just wanna keep it in the middle so that nothing is blown out. And then we're gonna take our photos. I'm gonna do a focus stack for this because I, this cactus is very close. Um, and then the mountains are far away. So I'm actually gonna do three frames. I probably only need to do two, but I'm gonna do three just in case. And I'm just moving my focus point around. Some cameras have a touch screen. This one does, I just don't use it very much. You can touch the different points that you wanna focus on. So yeah, we're gonna keep taking photos here and we're gonna see what happens with this light. And anytime that you're out shooting, uh, it's important that you keep adjusting your exposure. So nothing in my scene is moving so I can adjust the shutter speed as the night continues to get darker. So this is the settings that I used uh, like 15 minutes ago and now I'm taking another photo. You can see the histogram is way too far to the left so we can actually bring up the shutter speed uh, or slow down the shutter, shutter speed rather. And right about there is probably as far as we want to go. Now we can take another photo and we're just going to keep uh, opening up the shutter speed even more uh, to keep taking photos as the night goes on uh, because it is obviously going to keep getting darker and darker until we are finally done. I'm not so confident we're going to get a lot of color in the sky here but um, we're going to stick it out and see what happens. Alrighty guys, well not a whole heck of a lot of color tonight. This is about as good as it got. Maybe you can see so not that great, but uh, I'm gonna head back to the truck and make a little dinner and get to bed early, maybe do some work, we'll see. Um, and yeah, we'll start preparing for the next couple days. I'm always thinking about what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow, where I wanna shoot in the morning. I've already got a rough idea, but when I wake up uh, before sunrise, I'll look at the clouds and kinda see exactly where I wanna go. So we'll see you guys in the morning, adios. Alrighty guys, well when I woke up, the sky was already starting to burn. Now it's about 20 minutes before sunrise. You can see really nice color. We're at this really awesome arch here. I've got two different compositions set up. I brought out two tripods and two cameras because there's two really great photo ops that I wanted to capture. So I'm going to show you guys the first one here. It's up here. So the first composition here is a little more of a wide angle shot. Uh, and you can see that we're using the leading lines of this rock right here, as well as some of the rocks over there to get us up to the arch. It's really pointy and tall from right here. And we've got these really nice colorful clouds here. Let's go take a look at the second composition. Now my second composition is from all the way back here. You can see how far away the arch of the mountain is, but what I'm doing is essentially backing up and zooming in. What that allows me to do is to get the mountain in the background, and it might not show up on the GoPro, but either way I'll show the picture on the screen here. But it allows me to get the mountain in the background of my scene with the arch really big. So the mountain and the arch are both really, really big. Now we're getting some pretty nice light on the mountain. It's this nice pink light, and the sunrise is still coming around here. So really really nice composition here i usually try and shoot both these compositions if i get really good light at this particular location so when you're out here shooting uh, like this and you feel like the sunset's getting worse or sunrise in this case uh, i still always keep taking photos because you never know even though i feel like it's getting worse maybe it is or it isn't or maybe there's color in different spots and i'm not noticing it i always want to have as many files as i can to bring to the computer to work with uh, maybe lights hitting a different way so i'm always taking photos pretty much until the color is 100 percent gone there's no light at all so right now i'm just taking photos i'm running back and forth between the two cameras and i'm of course remembering to adjust my settings because it's getting lighter in the morning so i need to keep making my shutter speed a little bit faster to compensate for that so yeah it's still burning pretty good uh, pretty excited about this one guys now you can see the perks of setting up two cameras is this camera right here still getting some really nice light i really love the way that the side of this arch is catching some light as well as the top of some of these rocks it's going to look really really nice so i'm going to continue taking photos here and then i'm going to show you guys my other composition and it's kind of losing light and here's my other composition. You can see the light is quite a bit more flat. There's not really light hitting the mountains anymore. There's not really any nice clouds above, or not too terribly many. There's this streak right here. But um, so you can see this composition isn't really working too well anymore for the light, but that's all right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back up there and focus more on this camera until I see that the light changes back here. I'm going to leave this one out here. I'm just going to turn it off and then move up here. Alrighty guys, well that was a scorcher this morning, absolutely awesome sunrise. Uh, got some really good photos I think from both compositions and I'm really excited to take a look at those on the computer uh, a little bit later on the trip maybe. 
And uh, yeah, so now I've got a decision to make. I may run back into Death Valley today. Uh, I came over here to the Eastern Sierras. Uh, obviously I got my really nice shot that I was looking for. I thought I was gonna spend a few more days waiting for those kind of conditions. And then I was able to check the weather report and the weather actually looks pretty favorable again for Death Valley. So may head out there today. We'll see where I end up, but either way, we'll see you guys tonight. Good evening, everybody. Yet again, I have done some more driving and I am back in Death Valley. A lot of you are probably wondering why I went to the Eastern Sierras for just a single night to catch a sunrise and a sunset. And uh, I got to Lone Pine, got that really, really great sunrise this morning and uh, decided that after looking at the forecast that there was a much more favorable outlook for Death Valley, not necessarily for tonight, but for tomorrow morning. I didn't want to make that drive in the dark. So I'm out here in Death Valley now doing some scouting tonight. I don't think sunset's gonna really be good tonight, um, but I'm gonna do some scouting and then get ready for tomorrow's sunrise, which will hopefully be a lot better. So, so I'll kind of show you guys uh, what I'm scouting out tonight. It's pretty cool out here. All right, so I'm kind of following this little, I guess, stream. Uh, up here because I think there's some cool stuff at the head of the stream But in the meantime, I'm also looking at the stream looking for any cool curves Anything that might appeal to me for photography purpose as you can see the sky really doesn't look that great It's pretty dark on the horizon there uh, for sunset tonight But I'm always looking for spots for maybe tomorrow night or the day after uh, not sure how many days I'm gonna be here But the point is I always want to look for more and more spots. So yeah, this is looking pretty cool I'm just gonna keep looking around and see uh, what else I can find and you can see those little streams are kind of all over the place here So it's pretty easy to find them. It's just uh, Finding one that looks really cool is the challenge Alrighty guys Well, I did a lot of walking around and ended up with this composition here I really like this one because there's like three little uh, Circular salt holes, I guess in between the dirt really weird formations out here in Death Valley uh, and I'm hoping the sunset will light up that way. If not, uh, you can see the sun is setting right back here. There's a potential the sky could light up over here, but it looks pretty slim based on what I'm seeing right now. I think that this way has a little bit better chance just because you can see some kind of yellows in the clouds already, which means the sun is hitting them. Either way, I think that neither side has a good chance, but I think this side has a little bit better chance. So we'll see what happens here. You can see really cool textures that I'm photographing on the ground here. So we'll see what happens. Alrighty guys, well no color tonight, uh, but that was as expected. Still a great scouting mission, and I guess uh, I shouldn't be too greedy after this morning's uh, absolute heater of a sunrise. So, uh, gonna head back, get some sleep, maybe get up early. Uh, the moon, which is up over here, maybe you can see it, maybe not. Um, but the moon is supposed to be setting about 45 minutes before sunrise, which can make for some really nice photos. So I've got one spot in mind that I might go shoot at. I might just scout it though, and then shoot it the following day where the moon sets right at sunrise. So we'll see, I don't know if it'll be clear enough, but I'm definitely gonna wake up extra early tomorrow so that I can take a look at the moon, see where it is, see how clear it is, and yeah, just check it all out. And maybe I will end up shooting that tomorrow morning, Monday morning, who knows, we'll see. Uh, either way, I'll be out for sunrise, so looking forward to it and uh, let's cross our fingers for another good one tomorrow morning. Hi right, guys, I've got a little hunch that tells me we're gonna be in for a dandy this morning. Check out the sunrise already. I'm getting here a little late because I went to scout out that moon shot that I wanted. Didn't really like it. Should have went the previous day to scout it out, but I didn't have time. So I'm going to go back and scout it today, find the spot that I want, and then the moon will be actually in a little bit better position tomorrow to shoot. So I'll be back for the moon shot then. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to shoot the sunrise at a spot that I visited for sunset uh, a few days ago. So hopefully it's good, we'll see. Uh, going back to the same spot, we'll see how much the conditions have changed here. Probably not much in a couple days, but we'll see. And uh, we'll see what happens with the sunrise. There's clouds all over the place. I think it's really gonna light up this morning. Alrighty, well, I would say the sky gods have once again blessed us. I've got my composition here. This is actually the same little curve I shot the other day, but I shot it from over there, looking this way, so it's gonna look way different. Weirdly enough, there's actually some water in it this time, which it definitely hasn't rained, so somehow some water just got pushed out over here into it, but I don't mind at all shooting this way because it gives us a nice little reflection. So I've got my composition going here, um, and of course I'm continuing to take photos. And right now I'm doing the horizontal composition. I did have a vertical composition going from right over here, which I actually liked a lot, um, but I ended up going with the 
horizontal. I might switch back and shoot both, honestly. This is a really good sunrise, so might do both. But um, I like this, this horizontal because it lets me get more of this curvature in here and then coming out and giving that, me that leading line as well as the leading lines of the salt here. With my vertical, I was getting kind of the leading line here and a little bit of these leading lines down here. Um, it's just something that you just have to decide for yourself what you like better. They're both really good shots. Um, and of course I can shoot both if I'm fast enough switching back and forth between the tripods. So really awesome morning. We'll see uh, how much better it continues to get. I just realized that all that burn that you just saw, you can see it's kind of fading out now. It is still 25 minutes before sunrise. So expect there to be more. Uh, so when it something like this happens, usually I, th I believe it's because the sun is somehow reflecting onto the clouds, not directly hitting them. Um, so I want to regroup here and kind of look for other compositions because I'm expecting it to light back up again. Of course, I'm going to shoot this again, but maybe what can I find that's that direction? Or what can I find that's this direction? You can see it's a little bit more clear up here. So I'm not too concerned about looking for something that way, but especially this way. If the sky blows up that way, what's my second composition? I don't have one right now, so I'm going to stop filming on the GoPro and find a second composition and then get back with you guys when the sky lights up again, hopefully. Okay, so as you can see, I switched back to the vertical composition here. The reason being because it looks like these clouds up here are going to light up a little bit. Now, of course, with photography, to get the best shots, you're going to have to be adaptive to whatever conditions uh, the light is giving you. This one, it's giving me more nice light, so I'm going to take a vertical where I can get more sky in the frame, and then once that light goes away, maybe I'll go back to the horizontal composition. So always be adaptive to whatever is happening and the conditions that are happening around you. Another burner this morning. I guess it's just what we should come to expect out here. Uh, I've been out here so many times and never got uh, even a single good sunrise, let alone so many back to back to back to back. So just absolutely incredible. All right, guys. Well, after checking the weather, it looks like it is going to be pretty cloudy. So I'm probably not going to get many more good conditions. Uh, and I'm probably not going to be able to get the moon shot. So I am going to head home. We'll call it a trip. But that was an amazing five days out here in Death Valley in the Eastern Sierras. Just absolutely unbelievable conditions. And every direction. Most sunrises or sunsets were really, really nice. So I'm really fortunate to have been out here during this week. I've been trying to make this trip for so long and I've been checking the weather for months and months and months. And finally this week I saw this nice window of opportunity and it paid off. So really happy I came out here. Now, I did want to mention that I am doing a couple Death Valley and Eastern Sierra workshops this year. So if this trip looked like something that you would enjoy shooting, uh, some good cool compositions and stuff like that, consider coming out. I'll leave a link down below to my workshops on my website where you can find those workshops. Uh, it's going to be really fun out here. I'm really excited to bring out a few clients and show them how to take some amazing photos both day and night. It's going to be so much fun. I really hope you guys will consider joining me because it is such a beautiful area with such rapidly changing conditions. There's really nothing like it. Thank you guys so much for checking out this YouTube video. Really, really a really nice trip. I'm so glad I came out. Thank you guys so much. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you like this video. If you have any questions about anything I did in this video, please leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer it for you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.